here's where the concept for this show kind of came around. I was watching a YouTube video and saw a guy just briefly mention, you know, I use a teleprompter just so that I can see my notes. And it re-sparked something in my streaming life about using a teleprompter. Now, I had a teleprompting, teleprompter when I was in Clarkston uh, in Michigan, and I used it, although I was never quite happy with the way that it looked or where it was positioned, because when I'm operating at my desk, I have three, no, four monitors, okay? One, two, three, four. Uh, there are four monitors that are all around managing different machines. And then I was using a little mount, actually the magnet mount that I just talked about. I was using that to host a fifth screen, which originally was for my teleprompter. And as I was watching that U a brief YouTube video, I realized, you know, I really need to dig out the teleprompter and set that back up because I think... People who live stream but don't talk into the lens of their camera, they're, they kind of miss their audience a bit. They miss a connection point with their audience. And so I find, and now we're going to get into the meat of today's subject, by the way, and really apologize, folks, because I've got my uh, socials channel. I've got my socials channel kind of up in the wrong spot. I'm I actually need more desktop space, <laughs> believe it or not. I've got all sorts of things going here. So I'm not looking at your, your comments directly, but now I am. All right, so the meat of this this today's stream is about why you should really consider getting a teleprompter for your live stream or for streams that you're doing. And if you are doing talking head type of stuff and you are trying to connect with an audience that is not in the same room as you, all right? And it's not you necessarily trying to connect, but it is, you know, more likely the your speaker, your subject, your keynote is trying to connect with an audience that isn't in the same room. You really want to speak through the computer or through the screen that they're watching you on to the person. And there's no better, real better way in the public speaking realm, which is actually, by the way, um, one of my degrees from college. In the public speaking realm, I studied it. I'm not, I'm not perfect at it. I should reference that. Uh, one of the, because I say ahs and ums and likes a lot. So something I'm working on. In the public speaking realm, one of the things that they teach you is to connect with your audience in your nonverbal communication ways. And so one thing they say, for example, is to use your hands in gestures, but not pointing. So if I'm like, you should be getting a teleprompter, that's very different than if I say, you know, you should really be using a teleprompter. See the different, and actually one of regardless of politics, one of the things that happens with politicians is they're on screen a lot and they record a lot. One guy that was really good at nonverbal gestures to create connections was Obama. He was really good. He would do this with his hand. He would do this where he wasn't doing this or he wasn't like moving his hands around and where or like, you know, pointing and doing various hand gestures like he's guiding in an airplane. He would just do this. And so did Bill Clinton, by the way. You go back and you look and you see him talking. He would take this weird hand gesture. And when he wanted to make a point, he would just he would use his hand. So nonverbal connections with your audience becomes very important. And if you're live streaming, but your camera is kind of not focused on you and if we, even if we go back to this shot and I'm talking to you but I'm talking like this and I'm looking at my screen and I'm making sure I'm in frame but I'm not really looking at you right like I'm looking away I'm looking at my screens and I'm doing this thing if I'm not connecting with you in a way where you can see me and see the things that I'm talking about it actually distracts your viewer it actually disconnects them from being able to follow you along. And so with the word salad that I end up using all the time, and you know, I try not to use big gestures, it's kind of nice with a close focal length uh, lens like this one, is that I can talk almost directly to you, but obviously you're not in the room with me. 
So it makes it actually feel quite natural. And if you can train yourself to talk to a lens, then that's extremely helpful. Now, confidence monitors in the traditional world were used to show your notes. And so if you were going to read something, like if you're not comfortable on cameras, for example, and you wanted to read your, uh, if you want to have a script or something, you wanted to read, so I just want to check the stream health. If you just wanted to read a script so that it appeared that you knew what you were talking about and you didn't stumble through something, confidence monitors are traditionally used for those items where you can put your words up on the screen and then just kind of read along. And there are various ways of achieving that. In particular, Central Control has a teleprompter option, which is an amazing piece of software run by a guy named Joe DeMax. And I can't say enough good things about that product. I used it briefly at the end of my tenure at, tenure? I don't think that counts. The My six years working at Bird Dog, I had about six months worth of central control. Thank you to Joe DeMax for supplying that, but also uh, Jake Feynman, who set that up, who is also no longer at Bird Dog, but a good buddy of mine now. So we used central control, which had an actual NDI teleprompter, which means that you could output NDI to, you could output a teleprompter through an NDI feed, and then you could send that NDI feed wherever you wanted. And I had an NDI teleprompter from Telscript. Now, if money is no object, I really do recommend getting a Telscript teleprompter because I can advocate that they will hold a heavy PTZ, say P200 or P4K camera behind it, and it will uh, show NDI feeds on the screen. Now, it also does SDI, HDMI, and a variety of other things, but those actual Telscript units were great because you could send the screen had an NDI decoder in it and you could decode um, full NDI or NDI HX. So then you take a program like uh, Central Control and you send NDI out to that, you output NDI and then you link the screen to that NDI feed and then you could run your teleprompter that way. Now inside Central Control just to give a little bit more context, you would load your document, traditionally a Google Doc, into the teleprompting software, and then it would read it. And you could set it to auto scroll, or you could set it to scroll based on a keystroke, or based on a timer, or what. There are a lot of different options to have your script scrolled through on central control. And so that was a really great little piece of innovative software. It allowed a lot of people to film themselves on camera and feel confident. And so I used it a few times for training videos. As many of you know, I'm not necessarily a scripted, (laughs) for better or for worse, not really a scripted type of guy. And so I actually found teleprompters to be more useful in watching the output of my show in vMix. So here's how I have this one. Here's how I have my personal teleprompter set up. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the workarounds for this. Now, I don't have a Telscript teleprompter. If anybody from Telscript is watching, which I'm sure you're not, uh, feel free to send one over so I can review it again. Uh, No, I already know Telscript teleprompters are fantastic and really great stuff. I used to know the guy over there that sent it to me. I've I've lost his contact information since I left, Bird Dog. But great company, great guys to work with, but not cheap. And the reason is because you're buying a really nice screen and you're buying an NDI decoder and you're buying a very high quality piece of glass and housing and metal framing and the whole nine yards. But if you don't have that sort of budget, you can get into this for about 150 bucks. And I'll tell you how. Uh, You can buy a, the the unit that I have is a 12.1, but 12 inch teleprompter. And I bought a screen that is a 1080 screen that outputs a a computer screen. Now, you can do that a couple of ways. I'll get into that in a minute. But essentially, it's a 12-inch teleprompter. And what I'll do is I will throw that up on the screen so that you can see uh, what it is that I'm talking about here. So this is that 12-inch teleprompter, basically the same one. It's a different name, but it is identical to the one that I have. Doesn't come with a tripod. It is just the unit itself. So 
don't get too excited. It does come with that gray case, which I have here on the couch, which has some cheap foam inside for transportation, which is nice, not required. And once you get it set up, you may not want to change it. But here is that teleprompter. And mine's a different brand name, but it is literally the exact same product. So it's just an OEM selling it under several different names. Mine is not this one, but it is literally this exact unit. So 70-30 split glass, which is nice, allows your camera shot to come through and for the reflection to uh, not be seen, but to also be fairly clear. I actually find that this glass is brighter than the Telescript glass, oddly enough. And it doesn't seem to impair my image very much, right? So if I go back to the camera shot here, you cannot see what is on my screen, but I can see myself and I'll talk about how that's being done in just a minute. So this is the teleprompter. It's meant for a iPad and then you can buy iPad uh, you can buy iPad software that acts as a teleprompter and then you can you know scroll it forward with your watch or you can scroll it forward with the remote control or whatever. There are various ways of doing that. But in my instance, I'm actually using this as a way for me to see what is being shown on vMix. So I'm actually seeing, excuse me here, I need to fix my fix my glasses. I'm actually seeing the vMix output on my screen. And that's very handy because I uh, definitely need to be able to see what it is that I'm looking at. But when it's a full camera view, it's literally just a picture of me. Like I'm, I can see the blue image, the blue background. I can see my face. I can see my microphone, all of those things. And when I explain this to people, this is how it is that I normally do live streaming. They get a little gun shy, mostly because they don't like to look at themselves while they're talking. Well, Trick of the trade is I'm actually not looking at myself. I'm actually trying to look for the camera lens, which is behind the glass that I can kind of see. But if this was further away, if I had a longer lens and if it was a different camera, I might feel differently. But I did the exact same thing when I was at Bird Dog. I would output the NDI from vMix and I would send that to the Telescript NDI screen. And then I would be able to watch myself on camera and make sure that I'm in frame, that I'm not moving around. If I change, for example, something on vMix, I can see now that the desktop is basically the thing that you're looking at with the little side shot of me in the corner. So it's a way that I can verify what it is that I'm shipping out of vMix, as well as making sure I'm in camera, because as I said at the beginning of the show, I am very much so a one-man band. And so I'm doing this all myself, I'm controlling it all myself, I'm pressing the buttons all myself, and I want it to look as seamless as I possibly can. So this gives me the ability to make sure that my camera angle, while I'm looking at the camera, is correct, which is kind of two birds with one stone. Now, it took me a little while to get used to talking to myself on camera. Oddly though, not as long as I thought it would. It did take a little bit of adjustment and I probably need to move my light. You know, things are not perfect, but it did take me a little bit of time to figure out how to do this. But once you get the hang of it, once you're used to seeing yourself, then to it's totally okay. Now, the issue that you have when you start doing this is forgetting where you are in your conversation, in your train of thought. But if you have an idea as to where you want to go with your thought process, then it's not quite as awkward. And what I really like about this is when I look away from you, I'm actually looking, for example, at the chat. And so if I wanted to put up something in the chat, it makes sense that I look away and I turn that on and then I look back at you. And then we can see what it is that was said. That makes more logical sense on camera than it does for me to kind of be in a permanent position like this and be looking off and, oh, hey, how's it going? Even though I say something like, hey, Randy, good to see you. If I'm not looking at you, it feels very disconnected, doesn't it? So if I pull this up, if I, if I pull up Randy's second comment, hey, audio is good. And I say, oh, audio is good. Great. Thanks, Randy. That is much different than me saying, oh, great. Audio is good. Thanks. You know, like that disconnect, just that little travel of, quite frankly, I don't know, less than 10 inches off camera makes a huge difference. And so if somebody's, if you're listening to somebody give 
a live stream and they're not actually looking at you, then that becomes a bit of a problem. So, okay, so how are we accomplishing this? Because as you guys know, I run multiple computers now to do this live stream. My old PC that I used to use for vMix that was struggle bussing now generates a lot of my NDI sources. For example, camera one, which is this camera, is generated there, but also camera two. And so camera two is also plugged into that old computer and then is being put through a program to generate it into an NDI source. So as we, uh, we want to generate both the camera angles as NDI sources, and then we bring them over the wire. Now, this computer is not plugged into the internet. The, the, the old computer, the old vMix machine is not plugged into the internet. It is strictly on the NDI network, and it's connected via one gig SFP. So it's coming over the um, the 4250 that I have running my NDI network is issuing a DHCP addresses. And so this computer is getting, it's a 10 dot address, so 192.168.10. The, the big machine is 10.10, .10, and this, the older machine is 10.11. And we're generating those sources on the 10 network and then shipping them over to uh, this network again on that 10 network. So this computer is generating those NDI sources. But vMix is also generating an NDI source and shipping it back to the old machine. So what I'm doing here is I'm streaming out of vMix to YouTube and Twitch. And then I'm also generating the output as an NDI source. And I open Studio Monitor on the old computer and view that source there. And so now I can see the output of whatever it is that I'm doing on that computer. And I'm able to switch between them and know exactly where it is that I need to look. So teleprompters are a great little tool because they definitely give you the ability to kind of seamlessly connect with your audience and not necessarily have to uh, do a whole lot of hoop jumping. You just need to be able to see what it is that you're showing. So I have Studio Monitor open on my old computer, full screen, and I just selected that source coming out of vMix to uh, to Studio Monitor. So easy setup. It's basically just we're just watching each other's NDI sources, and I'm able to actually monitor the show in real time. So this little teleprompter screen that's on this uh, unit is the monitor for the old computer. Now, I'm doing a couple of other things with that computer for control, and I can show you that here over on this desktop. Let me open that up while we're busy doing that. So as you know, Screen Capture, which is a program that I'm running on both of my computers, offers a KVM option, right? So inside, if we go now to, this is, whoa, Screen Capture that's happening on that machine. And you can actually control what is being shown. So here I can show this. I can change the actual source on that computer using the KVM option inside Studio Monitor. So you turn on KVM controls on Screen Capture. And then you open Studio Monitor on your other computer and say KVM control. And now you basically have a remote system where you can control the other computer. So I want to say vMix. I want to see the vMix output on this teleprompter. And then I'm going to uh, remove that because we're going to get doubling effect. And now I can see that you're looking at my desktop shot. And then if I change it here, it also changes it on my teleprompter. So really quick and easy way to get control of your other computer because otherwise, by the way, I would be controlling it in a teleprompter and... Well, let me go down there in a second. But otherwise, I would be controlling it while looking through a teleprompter to control the screen. Now, that's not really the end of the world, but it's a little annoying because um, I don't really want to have to do that. The, the problem I have with the screen that I bought, and I can show you that in just a second here. So I bought a little screen that was like 11 inches that is 1080. And that's really the catch is you want to be sure that when you buy a teleprompter screen. You want it to be small enough to fit inside the teleprompter, but also the right size. Where is it here? 
small enough to fit inside the teleprompter, but also 1080 because your uh, little uh, monitor is going to say tell your computer what resolution to send. And so you want it to be 1080. Now, if I could just find it here, here it is. Okay, so this is the little screen that I bought. Uh, it wasn't 150 bucks, but I bought this back in April of this year because I had a previous screen, which was not a traditional resolution. And so I wanted this screen because it was 12 or 1920 by 1280 or 1920 by 1080. And so I bought this little screen thinking this would be great. The issue is, is that it does not have a mirror effect. And when you put a screen inside of a teleprompter, you have to mirror the screen in order for it to show text correctly. Everything's backwards, essentially. So if you can't flip it and it needs to be flipped on the vertical, is that right? So up and so vertical like this or horizontal? No. Anyways, you have to be able to flip the screen. And this little screen actually doesn't let you do that. It's just a standard screen, which is why I had it mounted here just as my monitor for that computer. It is a little small for that function. So if you really wanted a monitor for a computer, like I'm running 20, I'm running three 27 inch monitors for my main machine and another 27 inch for the Mac that runs here for, um, for my work. So this little screen, kind of hard to see text. I'm getting a little older. My eyes are not what they used to be. So this little screen is a little small. However, for using it for this function to make sure that I'm on camera and lined up correctly actually works great. So it's a, it's a great size for this, works really well, which is where Studio Monitor with KVM control comes in handy because then I can open Studio Monitor and I can control the whole screen uh, without any issue, I can set it up how I want. It's it shows it correctly, so I can just get it all set up, and then I can show it on the screen. So that has been an interesting learning curve. But now that it all works, now that it all kind of makes sense, I actually really like this. And what I what I like the most about this is I can put my camera in a place that seems a little bit more natural than in between two monitors or underneath a monitor. Now yesterday. I had this all mounted on a different tripod stand and the whole mounting system was actually a little bit too heavy. So there is some weight when you add a screen, you add the the weight of the teleprompter and you add a camera, you're going to be putting all of that weight basically on one point. I do like that there are multiple mounting points on the back of this teleprompter. Okay, there are multiple screw holes of multiple sizes, which is really nice. And so depending on what type of tripod you have, I just have a traditional threaded, you know, camera tripod. And I'm able to, it has a quick release on it, which is very nice. So I can just pop that off, put that on the bottom of the actual teleprompter, and then snap it into the tripod. So very quick, very versatile, and uh, the ability to set that up very fast. So I do like that on the bottom of this cheap little $80 teleprompter. There's definitely ways to mount it that make logical sense. But the weight is something you need to consider. And so I have a heavier duty tripod that I bought off of Amazon that has a nice swivel head. And that's where this is going to probably live for the majority of the time because it's able to handle the weight just fine. So I do like that a lot more and seems to be working, uh, working in my set up quite nicely. Uh, and like I said, I do kind of like this angle where I'm just almost at eye height. I'm not looking down on you, but I'm also not doing this number where I'm looking way up into the sky. Whereas on the other camera, you know, I'm it's kind of this weird like wide shot. And so I almost need to get it, you know, get it between the monitors or something like that. I don't know. I'm not convinced that I I love where it is, but it is what it is. So still waiting for a monitor with a hole in the middle for a lens. Oh, that would be interesting. Um, like a monitor that's basically, that you can mount a camera behind it, but it's a little bit transparent. Mm, that's a, it's not a bad uh, idea. That would be cool. I'm sure it's bound to happen, especially for gamers, right? Like it, I know that in traditional streaming, like if you go on Twitch, it's expected that the gamer's not going to be looking at the camera. But if they wanted to talk their audience that might be a feature that would be desirable. I watched a pretty common YouTuber 
the other day. I won't name names just because people get all sorts of ideas in their heads. But I was watching a uh, yeah a YouTuber who was doing a report on somebody, and I noticed that she was changing camera angles and following the camera. And I'm pretty sure she's a one-man band. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure she produces her own show, uh, one-man band. But she was changing camera angles and following the camera. And they're two of the same cameras, so it's the same rig. But following the camera and talking, doing like a talking head that was nice up close and personal. And then she had one that was a little bit further back that showed more of like a like a full shot, not head to toe, but waist up. And I don't know what I thought of it, you know, because I guess I was expecting her to have camera one. And as you remember from my bird dog days, maybe you don't, from my bird dog days, I would talk into camera one and then my other cameras would kind of change on a playlist, right? So in vMix, you can run a playlist and put all your cameras in the playlist and tell each camera angle how long to stay. And I had like four or five cameras. I had five cameras in there, but four of them were on me. That sounds vain. So all these different angles, but it was providing context for the show. So I had one that was directly on. Cam one was directly on me. I had another P4K that was further back that showed the entire studio you know, showed the entire rig. And that one only stayed for a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds or eight seconds or something. Then I had one that was to the side that was sitting on a windowsill, actually. And that one just showed a side angle. But when we changed to that camera, I didn't look at that camera. Like I didn't hunt for the for the tally light. I just let them go and continued to talk into cam one. And I felt like that was the natural way of watching the show. You know, I could pull this up on YouTube, I guess. I think all those videos are still there. But it was the natural way of the way that camera angles work is that they don't really expect you to to watch your, you know, watch the hunting around for all of the different shots. So it made more sense for me to stay on cam one. And it would, it would always come back to cam one after it went to something else. So it went to the far shot, and then it came back to cam one for like a minute and a half. And then it went to a side shot, and then it came back to cam one for a minute and a half. And I could stop the playlist and put on an overhead shot or do whatever I needed to do. But that was the the common way of, you know, following, following me on camera. So I don't know how I... Felt not that she consults me in any capacity ever. I, she never met me. She doesn't know who I am. But but like switching to camera angles and and watching, you know, looking in the lenses, it just didn't seem natural. It kind of seemed like she was changing her focus in an audience than it, than more than she was talking to. You know, somebody watching online. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I'd be curious to know how you feel about that. Whoops. Now, there's something, there was one other thing I was going to cover here. And of course, now I can't remember. Oh, I can. So this was the product that I was using for, not, this wasn't it, but this was the product that I was using, that I am using in the actual teleprompter itself. So this little screen, it just doesn't flip. You could buy a device that flips the screen for teleprompters, but it's just one more, you know, thing in the chain. And that seems like a lot. So I'm I'm not going to do that, but it is what it is. I actually, you know, I can get away with knowing that this is actually a reverse image uh, that's being shown here on my screen. Again, not a big deal, but if I want to control the old vMix machine, I just open studio monitor with KVM and I can just control it in there. And that's fairly seamless and, and works very well. I also, as many of you know, use Google Chrome Remote a fair bit. And so that's a great little program. I use that to manipulate computers in other places in the world, in particular, you know, at the soundstage. And when I'm working with other churches, I'll send them a Google Chrome Remote link and help them out that way. So that's a pretty standard way that I connect to computers. And this computer has that. However, there's no internet. So I actually can't connect to it because it's isolated on the 10 network, which is my NDI network. So uh, what I do there is I just use the power of NDI and I'm able to remote in and control things fairly, fairly well. All right, I'll go back to that teleprompter 
real quick so that you can see more of that. Now, it does have a 14-inch model, which I did not get. I got the 12-inch and worked worked pretty well. It's just for my little in-home studio here. This is literally what it looks like on the side. Uh, you mount. This is what my DSLR mount looks like. And I don't need the little HDMI screen because I can see myself just fine right there. So it it is designed for an iPad. I do have the 12.1 iPad Pro. So I've never used it in there, but 12.1 or 12.9. My iPad may not fit, but that wasn't my intention. I didn't buy it for the iPad. I bought it for a little monitor. So it is true. It has this little slide tray. Allows you to kind of lock your stuff in there. I can see the whole screen, although it is kind of on an angle, which I think is odd. Okay, that kind of fixed it. Um, and they do have an, a teleprompter app that you can use that does flip the script inside the app. That's nice. So now, is it the nicest teleprompter in the world? No. Absolutely not. Matter of fact, I would consider this a fairly basic bottom of the barrel teleprompter. But does it do what I need it to do? Absolutely, it does. And that's really what matters the most in your streaming situation. You know, I don't understand it, but people get caught into this world of, oh, I need to have that latest thing. And you really don't. You need to have the thing that works the best for you, that that gives you the angle that you need or want for your production. And I can get away with, I think total, I probably paid one hundred and fifty dollars for for both items, for the the screen and for the teleprompter itself. I uh, just wait until Black Friday or something if it's not an imminent need. But I prefer teleprompters because you can see what's being shown and you can verify that you are on screen. And quite frankly, we already use a lot of those with front facing cameras. We already use the concept of teleprompters all the time on our phones because you're watching yourself being recorded. It's just a matter of looking at the lenses. Now, what I hate about phones being like recording is you, it still looks like you're not looking at the lens, right? Whereas a teleprompter is far enough away and I can look at my, what would be my right eyeball, okay, the side with the light on it, or I can look at the lens and the difference is like, there, I'm shifting between the two, you can see my eyes moving, like it's very minimal. And if I was really smart, I would just line up my eyeball with the lens, which is what I used to do at Bird Dog, but you know, I kind of slapped this together a little bit quickly, but I already had a teleprompter. And so it's nice to have it kind of all set up again, have it all working again. And I do need to level it a little bit because it's a little crooked, but it works really well. And I personally think that when streamers or videos or interviews or whatever, you're doing this as a single talking head, I think looking at the lens is the right way to do it. And it's actually kind of difficult to get somebody to look at the lens. And so one way, like if you were interviewing somebody, for example, is to have a camera on you and a camera on them and put your image on the screen and say, just talk to me on the, on the screen. And that way they're not looking at themselves, right? Because that, that gets a little intimidating if you're not used to that. And if you're doing run and gun interviews all the time and you're, you know, you don't have time to train somebody and really hone them in on this skill, you may just put your own image up there and interview them through the screen. And you might sit next to them, sit next to this, whatever, but you talk into the camera and then they talk into the screen and respond to you. And that way you can both be looking into the lens with, when the interview is going on. The traditional way of doing that is obviously having somebody looking at you next to the camera. And so it'd be kind of like this where you would be interviewing somebody and they would be responding to you, but they're not actually looking at the camera. Now that style works pretty well. People are pretty used to that. But I also think that if you're trying to create a personal connection through video, 
there is nothing better than actually talking into the lens and having a good camera and lens to accomplish that. So that's what I like about my current rig is it seems to work really well in that regard. Okay, so that's my trip to Toronto. That's everything I have to say about a teleprompter. You can seriously get into the game for under 200 bucks. All right. Uh, I did spend a few dollars on a nice HDMI cable, but that's not required. And it's just a long HDMI cable, which is braided and everything. So it's a nice, um, it's a nice addition. I also have an extended USB that plugs into the camera. So again, these are things that make the camera work, make the screen work. But many of us have HDMI cables laying around. If you need something longer, okay, you might be 220 into the game if you are maxing it out. But you you seriously don't need a super expensive one. I can I can speak to this particular teleprompter for 80 bucks. It does what I need to do. And it comes with a carrying case. So if you want to pack it away or you're not going to use it all the time or you can't leave it set up on a permanent tripod or something like that, it does come with a case. Breaks down pretty easy. The whole glass comes out. Everything's Velcro, so it all breaks down. And you can load it into a, a case that fits into a tote or whatever really easily. So And it's padded. It has some foam in it. It's not the nicest case either. It's not the nicest tripod. But does it do the job? Absolutely. And it came from Clarkston all the way down to Tennessee. And it didn't break. Didn't have any issues. I, I seriously have had no real problems with it. In the Clarkston house, I was using this on the vMix machine. And of course, I had dual GPUs in there on the original vMix machine. I hadn't built this one yet. And so I actually had a screen duplicator mounted to the bottom of the of the teleprompter hardware. And then I went in uh, DisplayPort. And then I broke out DisplayPort and HDMI. And I duplicated one of my screens. That was okay. But this, I think, is much simpler, works a lot cleaner, and I'm able to still do all the NDI stuff that I need to do. So there is that. <laughs>